Praise the Lord. I trust you are doing well in the Lord today. Now today, I will talk a bit about how the enemy tries to frustrate our praying in tongues plans, so that at least you are aware of it. Now, this is something that uh, one of you had left a question some time, like one of you left a question some time back, and uh, she was asking about retaliation and how sometimes the enemy retaliates when we are praying in tongues and what we should do at least in case there are those sort of retaliations from the enemy to make sure that they don't affect us now the thing that you need to understand first is um the enemy uses scare tactics basically he has to make you afraid first before he can actually attack you so if he can't make you afraid then he can't attack you it is as simple as that so what happens is that in most cases, what, what we first experience are just the attempts of the devil to make us fearful. You see the way the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord, and then it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Basically, when you want to deal with God, the first thing you have to have is that fear of God. Basically, it's some sort of respect for God. And you see, when you have that sort of fear and respect, like that fear of the Lord, then naturally it opens you up for God to have his way in you. So it is the same thing that if you have the same sort of fear of the devil, then basically it is the devil that actually now gets access to you. And this is where now the devil usually tries to exploit, whereby he tries to scare people with the things that he does around them or like sort of threats that he makes to them. Now, anytime you go to pray in tongues, sometimes you may have some sort of attacks that the enemy actually brings your way. And you see, this may vary depending on how severe actually the enemy wants to attack you. But you see, the thing that you always have to remember is that you should never get afraid of the enemy. If he brings all these kind of tactics, just don't get afraid of the enemy. Just continue praying and continue just on the path that you had set yourself to actually pursue that particular day. Now, the thing is that when people get afraid, usually they try to, like, um, it automatically makes them, like, change their focus. So that, in like, instead of people paying attention to, like, what the Holy Spirit wants them to do or, like, what the Holy Spirit intended for them that particular day, they all of a sudden probably switch into trying to find out what the enemy is trying to do or like what the enemy is planning against them and all that. And when they begin learning what the enemy is planning against them, they get even more afraid of the enemy because now they are getting the details of the, of the attack that the enemy has against them. And then that loop just continues until they find themselves. They are ensued in some sort of like battle with the enemy and they don't know how to actually get out of that particular battle. But you see, that is just the trap that the enemy uses to get people's attention away from the Holy Spirit so that they focus more on his tactics and on his things. And then from there now, even though you may think you are fighting against him, but basically he's the one who has control because at that particular time, he knows that if he wants to get your attention, all he has to do is just to do something that scares you or something that is just sort of launching an attack that will make you switch your focus towards the things of the enemy. Now, the thing that you need to do, there are two basic ways of approaching, like uh, defending yourself against these kind of things. One is that you don't give the enemy any foothold. Just as the like Bible tells us, do not give the enemy a foothold. Now, the thing that um, like you should understand about giving the enemy your foothold is basically your focus. Because you see, the enemy knows that when you go to pray in tongues, your focus is on the Holy Spirit. You are drawing closer to Jesus Christ. You want to fellowship with your Father, your Creator. And you see, for him to stop you from doing that, he will try to do anything else to make sure that your attention doesn't go to that particular path of pursuing Jesus Christ and getting intimate with the Father. So this is whereby he may send like people to call you at the time that you want to actually pray in tongues. You may have people like knocking on your door when you are actually praying in tongues, or you may have other things just happening around you that try to take away your attention. Sometimes those scare tactics are spiritual. So sometimes you close your eyes to like begin praying and then all of a sudden there is a blackout and then you get scared because of, of that like sudden darkness that has come like around you or in your house. And then that kind of a thing it tempts you to actually like uh, pay attention more to 
whatever is going on around you more than yourself like more than the goal you had set to pursue the holy spirit other times you even start feeling as if there are some sort of pains within your body at specific places so sometimes that is how the enemy actually manages to um like get people to turn their focus from like praying in tongues and then they begin focusing on other things but you see the goal is that no matter how severe those like scare tactics are and no matter how scary they are always try to maintain your initial focus of pursuing the holy spirit and pursuing jesus christ and usually the enemy will scare you a little bit but if he sees that you are not getting scared then usually he will just leave you alone and go away the same way when he when he appeared to actually tempt jesus remember that time when jesus was in the wilderness you see the enemy tried to tempt him and he tried three times and when he realized that jesus christ was not actually falling into the traps that the enemy was setting for him then of course the enemy left to wait for another opportune time for him to come back again at jesus so you see the enemy is not going to stay around for long to try and get you to be scared he's usually just going to give it like two or three attempts and then from there he will leave you alone then you can of course now continue praying uh, like as you actually want now in other cases the enemy is relentless in terms of scaring you and wanting to make you give up praying and pursuing god now in that particular case you now have to apply a, like another level of aggression towards those attacks of the enemy and that is what the bible advises us in the book of james where it says resist the resist the devil and he will flee from you so basically what you need to understand is that you have to increase your level of resistance but you see there is a little difference between resistance and fighting because you see if you begin fighting the enemy then immediately your attention goes from like pursuing the holy spirit now you are pursuing the enemy because you see when you begin fighting against the enemy then of course your focus is on the enemy that you are actually fighting no longer on the god that you are actually pursuing so even the enemy himself he will have no problem if you choose to fight him after he has sort of brought those sort of scare tactics to you because after all he has already won because your attention has gone away from the holy spirit your attention has gone away from god you can no longer hear the holy spirit because now your attention is on fighting him now this is where i usually advise people to be very very careful when they are resisting the enemy so that you don't end up actually fighting the enemy just resist as that as the bible actually tells us and a good example of someone resisting the, the like someone resisting the enemy is of course jesus christ remember that time when he turned and said behind me satan when he was actually speaking to peter that was a good way of actually resisting the enemy so in resisting the enemy all that you have to do is you have just to let the enemy know that he is the one who is actually bringing those sort of attacks and number two, you have to let him know that you will not like allow those things to affect you so you just turn to him rebuke him for the things he is doing and say they will not affect you and that you will pursue jesus christ you will pursue the holy spirit you will listen only to god and you will not pay attention to whatever things he is actually telling you and immediately you say that because you see the enemy thrives in darkness basically if you don't notice that it is the enemy that is where he thrives immediately you notice that it is actually the devil and mention it then usually he will just flee because he doesn't want to be like noticed that he's the one who is actually behind those attacks so anytime you mention him and like rebuke him and say you will not do those kind of things then usually he's going to leave you and even if he doesn't leave you the thing is that once you have said that they now just turn your focus to be on the holy spirit and what the holy spirit is saying to you what the lord wants for you what the lord is instructing you to do because that is the thing that the enemy is actually targeting he just wants your focus away from god at whatever cost so if you understand that that is the thing he is targeting just make sure that you remain there regardless of what happens and then usually he will just give up because there is nothing more he can do to get you to turn away from him like like to make you turn away from the holy spirit who you are seeking and from jesus christ whom you are praying to now the last thing that you need to understand is that you see this attack sometimes they come before when you are beginning to pray and other times they come after you are done praying because when you are done praying usually there are things that the lord wants to deposit in your life or there are some blessings that he has promised you that now he wants to give to you 
and the enemy knows that you are about to receive those blessings so that is when he also comes to sort of distract you to try and get your attention away from the things that actually god wants to do for you so that you try to focus on other things that are not related to whatever god wants you to focus on basically things of fighting the enemy and all those kind of things but you see now what you need to do is that you need to be wise and make sure that your attention is always on the holy spirit so the fighting that you are doing you are basically fighting to make sure that your attention remains on jesus christ your attention remains on the promises that god has for you your attention remains on what the holy spirit is speaking to you and instructing you so if the if the holy spirit instructs you to fight the enemy then there you can do the fighting and of course he will usually also give you the procedure of how you fight the enemy so that is when you can actually fight the enemy but if the holy spirit has not instructed you to fight the enemy only resist because that is what the bible actually teaches us to like resist the enemy and he will flee from us so that was a little bit that i wanted to share with you today about fighting the enemy resisting the attacks of the enemy when you are praying in tongues and when the enemy tries to dissuade you from actually praying or he tries to take away your attention from the things of god by launching some form of attacks against you so regardless of what the enemy does just make sure that your focus remains on the holy spirit what he instructs you and on jesus christ and when you do that usually you will win and the enemy will have nothing more to do because he cannot harm you unless you actually fear him so if you don't get to that point where you fear him you have won so that is it for today god bless you